Kevin Lee is a special individual who had the potential to be a big star. He had an amazing skill set and the attributes of someone who could be a UFC champion. Kevin also had what they call in the professional wrestling world as the look. And to put the cherry on top, Kevin Lee knew how to draw attention. You know, Khabib's been ducking me for, for, like I said, for two years now. Yeah, I mean, sometimes he can say very delusional stuff. But you're probably asking, why couldn't Kevin Lee ever capitalize on the momentum? He had the skills. Why did he ultimately end up crashing and falling in his prime years? Well, we're about to find out. So don't forget to press the like button and subscribe to the channel. And now, let's get into it. This is the rise and fall of Kevin Lee. Kevin Lee would start his professional MMA career at 2012, racking up 7 wins in different small MMA promotions. This would be enough for the UFC to be knocking in Kevin Lee's door, as they would sign the young rookie in 2013 in just the age of 20. And in 2014, February 1st, we would see the debut of Kevin Lee as he would face Ally Quinta. However, it didn't go Kevin Lee's way since he ended up losing by unanimous decision, giving Kevin Lee his first MMA professional loss. And this loss would result in Kevin Lee leaving in his gym and move state michigan to las vegas to improve in his game and that coach that would take kevin lee into a different level was robert fallis as he joined extreme couture and this would end up helping kevin lee massively as for almost the next two years kevin lee would be on a four five win streak Kevin Lee would eventually hit a brick wall when he got TKO by Leonardo Santos at UFC 194. Besides this minor setback, Kevin Lee dusted himself off and got back on top of that horse, going yet again on another four fight win streak. And finally, Kevin Lee would end up getting his big break when it was announced Kevin Lee would be facing Michael Chiesa at UFC Fight Night 112. And this is where the delusional Kevin stick would end up happening, where Kevin Lee would be saying delusional things like this. Oh, I already got like people hit me up on Twitter and blah, 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 saying I'm trying to be like Connor, man. Fuck Connor. I ain't trying to be like none of that. He, if anything, he trying to be like me. I go out there, me and Khabib, no punches thrown. I'll, I'll tech fall him. 15 and 0. I keep taking him down. He won't be, do a damn thing. You know, Khabib's been ducking me for, for, like I said, for two years now. And during the UFC summer press conference, Kevin Lee would take over the show saying things like this. I ain't even gonna talk no shit. I ain't up here to shit talk. You know, Mike over there. He, they both shit talking over there. Mike Johnson talking about he gonna kill somebody. He got 30 fights, lost half of them. Ain't killed the motherfucker yet. The only reason he took the fight is because it's in OKC. I'm gonna carry him through this car. He's gonna head Headline because of me. After that, he's going back to the prelims. But I just hope uh, he shows up because I know his mama got tickets. So shut the fuck up about hey. Don't bro. talk about my mom for one. Don't you ever talk about my mom. Don't you ever talk about my fucking mom. Don't you ever talk about my fucking mom. Dad, you might want to get the middle. Like whatever you want to call it. I'm gonna smack uh, the fuck out of you right now. Don't you ever talk about my mom. Yeah, 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 talk about yeah, yeah, yeah. What's And boom, just like that, Kevin Lee's momentum started. And Kevin would eventually fight Michael Chiesa at UFC Fight Night 112 as Kevin Lee would ragdoll Chiesa and get the first round finish. But of course, there was a bit of controversy as Chiesa immediately protested, saying that it was an early stoppage. And let me be the first to tell you, Chiesa wasn't getting out of that. He wasn't defending the rear naked choke. There was more than like 40 seconds in the clock and he was just gonna go out. Simple as that. Now let's keep going. Kevin Lee and Tony would have an altercation and the UFC saw money. So they decided to book it for UFC 216 for the UFC lightweight interim title since Conor took the champion hostage after UFC 205. In the first round, Kevin Lee's chances looked promising as he outgrappled Tony and landed some vicious ground and pound. But after that, Tony's pace overwhelmed Kevin Lee and Lee ended up gassing out, leading to a third round finish by a triangle choke. Kevin Lee impressed the world and a lot of UFC fans were impressed with Kevin Lee's performance. And they even looked at him as a potential future champion still, especially when Kevin told the world that he fought Tony with a staph infection. However, tragedy would struck for Kevin Lee as his coach Robert Fallis took his own life at the age of 48, and this would affect the Motown phenom as he was a big part for Lee's success from prospect to contender. And I feel like this was one of those things that changed Kevin Lee forever when it came to outside and inside the cage. And I do think this would have a negative impact for the rest of Kevin Lee's career. Kevin Lee would come back in UFC Fight Night 128 to face Barboza, where he also missed weight by two pounds. However, he would make up for it as he dominated Barboza for all five rounds and win by Dr. Savage. Kevin Lee's next opponent would be Ally Quinta, again, as Lee was trying to get that win over the guy who gave him his first loss. This fight was booked at UFC on Fox 31, where it was a back and forth brawl for the most part, but it wasn't enough for Lee to get the win since he ended up losing by unanimous decision. 
And after having bad weight cuts and missing weight, it was time for Kevin to make the jump to the welterweight division and he would face Rafael Dos Anjos at UFC Rochester where he had a great first round. Afterwards, he got an adrenaline dump and ended up losing in the fourth round by an arm triangle. At this point, Kevin Lee's career didn't look so good, losing two fights in a row. This resulted for Kevin Lee to relocate to Montreal and join TriStar to train with Faraz Ahabi, who was famous for helping GSP. After this, Kevin Lee was looking for a return in the lightweight division, and he was looking for a killer for his return, and his wish was granted, as it was announced that his comeback fight would be against the undefeated Gregory Gillespie and Kevin Lee was able to capitalize on this because it only took two minutes to finish Gillespie and just like that he got the best knockout of 2019 and this highlight resurrected Kevin Lee's career as he gained insane momentum once again. He arguably had more momentum now than he did at 2017. In the coming months Kevin Lee would try to protest for a 165 division. I guess the name would be a super lightweight division and Kevin Lee believed that him and other fighters were in a disadvantage saying that he's too small for the welterweight division and too big to get down to the 155 division it honestly got some traction but it never got anywhere Kevin Lee's next opponent would be against Charles Oliveira at UFC Fight Night 170 where Oliveira was in a six fight win streak and yes Kevin Lee wanted the hardest fight in the division and in the weigh-ins the Motown phenom once again missed weight and if that wasn't bad enough, he would end up getting submitted. Kevin Lee's next fight was against D-Rod in the welterweight division at UFC on ESPN 30 where Kevin Lee yet again had a strong first round until D-Rod took over the next two and Rodriguez would get the biggest win in his career when he won by unanimous decision. And if this wasn't bad enough, Kevin Lee received a six month suspension by USADA for testing positive for Adderall. And a few months later, it was announced that the UFC released Kevin Lee. On December 15, 2021, it was announced that Kevin Lee signed a four fight deal with Eagle FC. Lee was gonna be one of the faces of Eagle FC and he was gonna make his debut against an old Diego Sanchez in a 165 pound. Yes, Lee finally got the weight class that he wanted. And on March 11, 2022 at Eagle FC 46, Kevin Lee would beat Diego Sanchez by unanimous decision, but Kevin Lee looked terrible. He blew out his ACL and couldn't even finish a 40-year-old past his prime Diego Sanchez. The company eventually went down under, and in early February 2023, it was reported that Lee had resigned with the UFC, and right away, he asked for a dangerous fight against Rina in the welterweight division at UFC Fight Night on ESPN. Rina absolutely ran through Kevin Lee and finished him in the first round with a guillotine and this was Kevin Lee's worst performance. He had no head movement, he just stand there like a fish out of water in the stand-up. And on July 11th, it was announced that Kevin Lee announced his retirement and it was kind of sad to see. And at the end of the day, you can make fun of him, make memes of him saying he's delusional, yada yada but he was a very talented individual. He just had a lot of things going against him when it came to him being on your side or when it came to bad weight cuts or how he had really bad cardio. He just couldn't put it all together at the end of the day, but I was grateful to watch him fight. He gave us some very great moments and now it may have not ended the best way, but he did have a great career. And this was the rise and fall of Kevin Lee. And everybody who supported me, um, and even the people that, that, that kind of doubted and hated along the way, um, I appreciate everybody and it's been a hell of a journey. I'm, I'm still young. I'm still um, capable of doing a, life, a lot in his life and that's what I'm gonna do. So yeah, I'm probably leave this Instagram page up. You know, I might post some old stuff, like some, some old memories and, and, and shit like that. Um, as I restart like a new social media or whatever I do, uh, whatever it is is what it's gonna be. So appreciate y'all.